Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the program today is Partha Sitala, who is President of the Cloud Business Unit at Rakuten Symphony. And Partha is a man behind the hyper-converged cloud-native platform, which runs the world's first end-to-end cloud-native telco, Rakuten Mobile, in Japan. Welcome, Partha. Great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now, whilst the cloud-native transformation is certainly gaining prominence, telcos have really yet to replicate the success that the IT world has seen with cloud native. So what would you say are some of the key challenges for telcos? So first of all, thanks for having me, Guy. It's a pleasure to always talk to you. Um, regarding your question on why telcos have struggled uh, to adopt cloud native, whereas enterprises have succeeded, maybe I'll just start with a little bit of background that will help in you know, framing this conversation. So before uh, Rakuten Symphony, I was the founder and CEO of a company called Robin.io that was acquired by Rakuten Symphony almost a little over a year ago. And we started Robin.io to actually focus on solving the problems for cloud native uh, architectures in the enterprise space. And it just so happened that uh, telcos came along the way in our journey. And so that gives me a good perspective to basically compare you know, what has happened in IT industry versus what's happening in the telco industry and how we can actually bridge that gap. So now coming back to your question, uh, IT industry, you know, we, we have seen in IT industry that there is an inherent benefit in bringing programmability and automation to manage workloads, right? Whether it would be, you know, business logic workloads or it's web scale workloads or what have you, right? AI, ML workloads and so on. Uh, and the benefits, of course, are in terms of, you know, the speed at which new services can be deployed, the ease at which, you know, they can be managed and the cost that you could save by all the programmability and automation, and also the fact that you can run them on commodity hardware. Now, for the telco industry, for the most part, right, it has been dominant with, dominated by players who have been creating vertically integrated stacks all the way from hardware to software. And making that leap of faith that actually it is possible to bring the same level of agility benefits, the same level of software organization, as well as automation into the telco industry is hard. Uh, and you need you need somebody to actually start. And uh, you know, Rakuten Mobile, we all know this, uh, was pioneered in this in the space. I mean, they basically thought about building out an entire network uh, based on the principles of software, based on the principles that if you can bring down everything into a software unit that can be deployed on commodity hardware, then you can bring the benefits of you know, automation, which will result in agility, which will result in savings or saving in the TCO savings and so on, right? So the first thing I would say is that you needed somebody to make that leap of faith. Uh, we're very fortunate as an industry, I would say that Rakuten Mobile has made that, uh, that leap of faith. Now, this is where players like us actually come in, right? When I say us, I'm talking about, you know, before we became part of uh, Rakuten, the Robin.io, because we build the entire software stack uh, with the fundamental understanding that regardless of what type of applications you run, whether it's network heavy or it's storage heavy or it's just compute heavy, you can still benefit from the innovations that are happening at the cloud native layer and the innovations that are happening at Kubernetes, right? Uh, and we have now been able to demonstrate that at Rakuten Mobile by actually launching a very large network that's completely running on top of you know these things, these technologies. Uh, so I think the first thing is crossing that uh, that, that you know that um, the belief right that you can actually do it. Now that we are doing it, I've actually started to see a lot more uh, telcos embracing this idea because what they have seen is that you know now that it can be done, the cost savings are significant enough, are substantial enough that you have to take down, take this path. The benefits of you know upgrading the services more frequently because you're not essentially swapping out hardware, but you're doing a software-based upgrade is huge for them because they're able to bring in new features into their network. The ability for them to use the same hardware footprint and bring in newer classes of workloads is also a big win for them. So I think initially we went through this phase of skepticism. Now that we are seeing that it is a reality, uh, I am seeing actually that telcos are also embracing uh, cloud native, just like enterprises are. Um, Partha, you mentioned that it can be very difficult to make this initial leap of faith, but telcos are doing that now, or a lot of them certainly are. But where are the potential areas where telcos 
can make faster progress and experience the real benefits of cloud native adoption? Yeah, so I think you know it's it's very important that um, you know uh, the telcos uh, should not take a very theoretical approach to cloud native. And what I mean by that is, the first thing is to recognize that you know for truly becoming cloud native. First, within the telco, the operator itself, there has to be a mindset shift that has to happen, right? Uh, the fact that it is feasible, the fact that they need to upskill their some of their existing, uh, you know, employees, the teams, uh, to essentially know these technologies. But there's also the other side, which is on the vendor side, right? The vendors that are supplying the software to them, that builds out their network services, those vendors also have to make that shift towards cloud native. Now, when I said they shouldn't take a theoretical approach, what I mean by that is they should recognize that the vendors will make this leap slowly. It's not going to be a cutoff from the old world to the new world. So if the telcos want to make this a grand success, they should essentially accommodate in the cloud native you know, principles, things like VNFs. Because when people talk about cloud native, they only talk about CNFs, right? The container uh, network, uh, container based network functions. But there's a huge amount of you know, virtual network functions that predates cloud native. So the platform that the telco picks should be such that it should be able to bring the VNS to run on the cloud native platform to get the benefits of operations, right? That they would get from CNS and then allow the vendors to slowly make the transition from VNS to CNS. I think this is super critical of if this journey has to be truly successful and this journey has to be truly done in a cost efficient manner. And Partha, are there any key considerations for telcos while they're developing their cloud strategy? Yeah, I would say that there are a few things that um, the telcos should think about. Uh, one, I would say we already talked about upskilling their existing uh, team members. I think that is super critical because you know, cloud native is not just a check the box thing. There is a certain level of understanding that they need to have so that they can get that efficiency. But I would also call out that to truly get this benefit that the enterprises are seeing, uh, telcos also have to figure out how to automate the operations. It's not just about making their network functions cloud native ready, but they should also automate their operations. And when I say automate these operations, they have to think along the lines of, how do I bring in closed loop uh, automation for detecting what's happening in my network and reacting it to it in a very programmatic manner, right? How do you write those policies? That's, the, that's one thing that they need to do. Uh, the next thing I would say is that what they need to do is essentially figure out how they can leverage the innovations that are happening at the silicon level. Uh, you know, and how do you basically make your vendors uh, ben benefit from those innovations? Because that is the only way in which they can essentially, again, as I said, bring up the performance of their stack while keeping the cost, uh, cost low. So I think the telcos also have a very important role to play here. Uh, to make this, uh, you know, make this a rea make this a reality. If we can turn back to Rakuten Mobile now, while Rakuten was building out its cloud native journey, what were some of its key considerations for selecting your SIM cloud cloud native platform and the SIM cloud orchestrator? Yeah, so Rakuten uh, picked Robin.io as their uh, platform of choice, cloud native platform of choice, um, several years ago, two thousand and nineteen. And when they were evaluating the platforms, I think the primary considerations they are looking for are the following. Number one, a platform that is highly optimized for running two classes of workloads. The first class is very network sensitive workloads, right? which is a traditional RAN and core and any other network function you run in your network. The second class of workloads they are looking for is a platform that can run their storage intensive workloads, right? Which is where you would get your backend databases that would power your PSS, OSS, and so on. The big data platforms, uh, databases, message queues, and so on, right? So that was the first criteria, which is a platform that can seamlessly run, or rather a platform that has been architected from the get-go to bring the efficiencies and the performance requirements for network and storage-centric workloads. The second thing that they were looking for is a platform that is adaptable because you know when Rakuten made this shift towards you know doing this entire thing on cloud native, they were pioneers. Right? There was no blueprint that they could easily follow, which means that the vendor that they had to pick and the platform from a technology point of view that they had to pick had to be flexible. That you know it can change in a very you know in an elegant manner to be able to adapt to the needs that are uh, 
uh, that, that are there in running a network, right? And the third one I would say is our automation. I would in fact use the word hyper automation, right? Right from the get go, um, viewer focus, you know, sim cloud platform. By the way, you use the word sim cloud. Sim cloud is a new name for um, the, the Robin.io product line. Uh, hyper automation is something that we were very much focused on very early on. And our architecture, because it was software driven, our architecture, because it was you know, architected with these two types of workloads, storage and network intensive workloads, we actually abstracted out the day zero and day one requirements for such workloads so that they can be programmed and you could essentially get this closed loop automation for both you know, uh, lifecycle management as well as you know, deployment and so on. So those are the three criteria that um, you know, Rakuten used to pick SimCloud. And finally, Partha, can you share some of the unique capabilities of the SimCloud platform and what it offers to successfully deliver on this vision for a commercial carry grade deployment and at scale? Yeah, certainly. So I'll call this out, right? See, at the end of the day, there are so many cloud native platform, platforms out there, right? So many of them, because it's a real problem. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are trying to solve it from many different angles. The, the reason why we are unique, right, is uh, unlike the other cloud native platforms that originated with the basic, you know, premise that how do you make Kubernetes enterprise grade ready? How do you make it more, you know, widely acceptable? Uh, that's how most of the other cloud native platforms started. We started with a completely different premise. We started with this asking this question, right? That okay, let's assume that Kubernetes is wildly successful. Let's assume that. Okay, what would it take, right, for right it to run network and storage intensive workloads? And the answer to this question is vastly different, architecturally speaking, product architecturally speaking, from the way our competitors have built their stack, right? The efficiencies that you need to build into the Kubernetes scheduler the efficiencies that you need to build into the storage and networking layers, the compute layers, the GPU layers, and all that is very different. Um, so I think that's one thing that's very unique um, that uh, that we have built. Um, the other thing I would say is that, um, uh, you know, the way we have thought about, as I said earlier, right, automation is also very different um, because for us, it is auto it's an automation first approach that we have taken. And what I mean by that is, let's say there's a task, right? And the task is as simple as, you know, again, I'll just take a very simple use case. You'd like to back up your business critical workloads, right, in your network. There are so many steps to do that, right? I mean, you have to essentially figure out what is the footprint that that workload is using in, on an infrastructure point of view, what is its configuration, what is its metadata, what is its topology and all that. And all those th things need to be done one after another, right? When we took this automation first approach, we basically said, what if we can essentially distill all those things down and make it a one-click one action? Correct. It's a it's a very hard technical problem to solve, and we have solved that, right? So all these workloads, the the uniqueness of our platform is that all of these become single click workflows, and the net benefit to the end customer, right, is that a it is simple, and b it is less error prone because the moment you bring simplicity in in a complex set of uh, sequence of steps that need to be taken, you essentially eliminate errors, right, and that essentially leads to a higher reliability on the network side. Uh, also. So those are the unique things that we bring. But in addition to that, I mean, I also mentioned a few other things, right? Right from the get-go, we have been supporting VNFs and CNFs on the same platform. We have done a lot of work on the compute, storage, networking, and the GPU layers, uh, whereas some of our other competitors have, uh, you know, they have taken a very siloed approach. They have essentially cobbled together solutions so that they can bring all these domains under one platform. Uh, we, are, we are actually doing a lot of work on energy and power management. Um, given that we have a very large network that we are managing. In fact, there's a uh, third party survey that was done and they have uh, concluded that SimCloud runs the world's largest telco edge cloud today, right, in production. So given that we have such a large footprint, there's a lot of data that we are collecting that can be used to, you know, to enable a machine learning algorithm to go and figure out, you know, do better capacity forecasting, uh, predict failures before they happen, uh, you know, figure out the uh, auto auto healing uh, you know, policies and so on uh, by just just by learning what's happening in the network. So those are the uniqueness that uh, we bring to the table here. Well, unfortunately, we must leave it there for now, Partha. As always, it's great talking with you, and thanks so much for sharing your insights and experience with us today. It's been a pleasure, Guy, and thanks thanks for this interview. Uh, 